two liters of this is not bourbon. Hello and welcome back to another Beaver Brew Day. As you can see, we have completed the run of the bourbon, bourbon, and uh, we ended up with the jars we have in front of us. Let's quickly pop over to past Beaver. It's going to explain how we got to this point, and then we're going to go to another past Beaver that will explain another step where we set up the still and a little bit about how we did the run. Future Beaver just introduced past Beaver, that is me. What we did is we got the still now all charged up and warmed up for our first of two stripping runs for our bourbon. So what we are doing now at the moment is the still has gotten up to temperature. We started getting first drips off of the still. So uh, when I do my stripping runs, what I do is I bring the temperature up once I get the temperature, I allow the still to rest at a very low power. So I turn off one of the elements and I turn the other element all the way down. Let it rest there for about 15-20 minutes, allowing me to collect a little bit of the beginning of the product. We're not going to make any cuts. All that we're going to do is we're going to collect as much as we can up until we either hit the number that you are going for I go for zero so I run my stripping run all the way down into zero before I recharge my still so it has now been 15 minutes since I started getting first drips and I turned down the power what I want to do now is I want to start doing the stripping run so I know my column is all balanced and I'm not going to get any boil over or anything like that because I allowed this whole thing to rest for a little while now I need to start stripping. Now what is a stripping run? A stripping run is when you take off as much of the product as fast as possible. So the only thing that limits you on the speed of a stripping run is the ability of your condenser to knock down the vapor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up my speed, uh, my vapor speed and the way we do that is by increasing the power that goes into the boiler so if you have electric you're going to increase the power if you have gas you're going to up the gas then what i'm going to do is i'm going to allow it to settle in for another five set ten minutes and see if i have any additional vapor coming off the spout or everything is knocked down if you have a massive shotgun condenser you will not have no problems doing a really fast stripping run. But my condenser is quite short and I can only put so much power in before the steam starts coming out of my spout. So let's turn up the power. As I said in previous videos, I use a speed controller of a 2400 watt polisher. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna increase the power and see what happens when I hit. So not all the way yet, we're about four and a half on this dial and I'm gonna keep an eye on my drips. If we turn up the power, what we'll see happening is almost instantly the speed starts picking up and then our takeoff speed starts increasing. So I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes to run at that speed and see if my condenser can keep up. So with my stripping run speed at the maximum that my condenser can handle, so that's about the speed that I'm taking it off. Any faster, I start getting vapor coming out of the top here and uh, I'm no longer knocking back all the, the steam. So yeah, that's where I'm gonna keep it at and let it run and collect up until I hit zero. With the stripping runs all done, we ended up with roughly 9 liters, maybe 10 liters of low wines at 20%. We need to now get this into the still. We would have gotten a lot more if I did not waste half of it on the floor and the other half on my shirt. Yeah, if you want to check the video where I made a big boo-boo of the mash, then uh, I'll link it up here. 
But yeah, we've got 20%, nine liters. We need to add it into the still and then do a spirit run or a rectification run. Right now, this stuff smells kind of sweet. You can smell a lot of tails, but that is the flavors we want to pull out of it. So it smells sweet. It has a very grainy, grassy smell to it. So yeah, I'm very excited to see what comes out of this bourbon. And now keeping true to making sure that we follow all the rules bar one. We're not going to go and distill this in America to make it a bourbon. We need to now distill this off at no higher than 160 proof. So that is about 80% ABV. So we're not allowed to distill this off at higher than 80%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my trusty calculator. Uh, check the picture up here. We'll be hovering here now. So we have roughly going to have once we add water into this, it's going to be at about 15% ABV. If we distill it off at straightforward pot still mode, we will end up with a ABV of roughly 60%. We need to get to 80. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some packing into my column that will give us a pseudo secondary run as we do the rectification run, bumping our ABV to around about 75 to 80%. And that's where we want it to hover for the majority of the run. So yeah, let's get some packing in the column. Let's get this low wines in the still get everything up to temperature and i'll check back with you guys once everything is ready and set up for those guys that are wondering what packing i will be using it's a combination of ration rings marbles pieces of copper tubing and then bundled up pieces of copper wire so let's get packing into this column. I'm going to pack the column from the bottom all the way to the top. And that should give us that extra bit of reflux, passive reflux that we require to get to our goal of 75 up to 8. Let's start packing. Okay, so we're about to start getting first drips coming off the still. As you can see, the drips are starting and there we go. That is our line taking off. So step number two, we're going to turn off one of the elements. So that turns off one of the rings of my elements. And we are going to turn down the power on the other one. So that brings our power to about a quarter of one of the rings. Then what we currently have as well, as, as you can see, we took off quite a lot in a couple of seconds. You'll see that it is starting to slow down. Once we get the drips to get almost completely to stop, we are then going to have the still, still running at full reflux. So I've got water going through my reflux chamber at the top. So the water through the reflux is pushing back all the vapor that's coming up and it's dropping back down in the column. What we're going to do is we're going to leave it in full reflux for about 15 minutes. And leaving it in full reflux for 15 minutes will allow our column to get nice and balanced. And then after 15 minutes, we're going to slowly start backing off on the reflux, getting to the takeoff speed that we want up until we have no reflux. So we're going to play around with the reflux and the power. So with both past beavers now all happy and satisfied, we did complete the run and it's time to blend and get these things to start aging. So what we have in front of us is the jars we took off the still. As past beavers showed you, we did put it into full reflux and take off the heads and four shots that we have in this jar here at 82%. So that came off at 82%. We then dialed back on the reflux and we've started taking off 
what we effectively will call the heart. Except for that little jar there. We'll talk about that bad boy now. But yeah, we ended up with jar one at 69%. We then add, uh, decrease the power a little bit. Then we went to 79, another jar at 79. We took a jar at 75. Then we took a jar at 55 and 40. And as you can remember, we're not allowed to distill to higher than 160 proof. So that is roughly 80% ABV. So what I want to do quickly is just get all of these little jars all dunked in here. And yeah, as I dump them in, I'll just give you guys a quick descriptor on the flavors and the nose that we get from these bad boys. So yeah, let's get into it. The jar one, very sweet, almost like a, if you live in South Africa, like a cook sister, kind of sweet to it. Number two, you're starting to get hints of the grain, but also extremely sweet in the flavor on the nose. The jar number four has a distinct grainy, all brandy. If you ever had all bran flakes and you added the sugar, except for the milk part, but that sweet, all grain, all bran type cookie smell. Jar number five. Just double down on the, the grain flavor. A little bit less sweet. Number six. So this double down again on the grain. So the grain flavors are coming through. Uh, the ethanol layer has almost completely disappeared. So as jar number last started coming off the still, the last one of the hearts, you could see the actual oils dripping in. So I took it off immediately. I had like three or four drops of that oil into this jar and it added a big punch of that uh, grain flavor in here, but like almost wet grain type of thing when uh, a fresh hay or something like that, but not too bad yet. But the large jar over here, we ended up with very strong uh, oils dropping in this and it literally smelled like wet grain if you leave a bag of uh, corn or something out and it gets a little bit musty in it not froth, not rotten but uh, yeah doesn't have a good smell to it so I've had this question quite a few times regarding tails how do you know when you are heading into tails do you judge it by abv do you judge it by this so i tend to go with abv and not put anything into my product below about 40 percent uh, depending on what i'm running because if you're doing a sugar wash or that there's not a lot of tails that come through so you can actually go a bit deeper but on all grain type of things like this and fruit brandies you do get a lot of that nasty flavors coming through quite quickly at the end of the run so i did a quick video or it'll be a quick video here where you can actually see the drops dripping into the liquid and you can see those little waves of as the oil is dissolving it's like dripping baby oil into water you can actually see the oils going in and that's how i know that i'm going into harsh tails i did collect the rest of the jar because this goes into my paints and the tails came off at 30%. So this goes into the faints jars. I already have one five liter full of faints. Just need a couple more of these jars and then we can start doing another all faints run again. So with our hearts poured into our graduated jug, we have 1.4 liters almost exactly of high proof spirits. What we need to do now is quickly check the ABV of it. So there we go, let's just pour a little bit into here. So with any better luck, we will be sitting roughly about at 65%, maybe a bit higher, maybe 70. We are sitting at 70% at 1.4 liters. So once again, without having to stress about the calculations too much, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into my Alco calculator. I love this app. It just made my life a whole lot easier the moment I started using it. It's not sponsored, so um, I'll post 
the link down in the description if you want to download it yourself. Once again, screenshot will be up here of what I am doing now. First up, we will add our product volume. So we have 1.4 liters of product. Our starting strength is 70% and because we're not allowed to age a bourbon over 120 proof, that means we need to bring the ABV of this whole product down. I prefer the sweeter flavors that come out of wood and that means we need to age it at below 55%. So I'm going to go for, let's call it 102 proof, so 51% ABV. So we're going to go for 51% ABV. That means we need to add an additional 500 and 45 moles of water. Let's add our 500 moles, getting the total volume up to 1.922 liters. So I'm just going to shoot for 1.9, that extra 222 moles won't bother me that much. Boom. There we go, just a quick sanity check on our ABV and we are sitting a hair above the 50% mark. So I'm happy to add this bad boy into my two liter mason type of jarry baby and get my wood in it and leave it for a couple of months. So I don't spill all the liquid once again. Apparently this recipe is all about spilling. So with everything added into our jar, almost filling it up, hopefully there's enough space for the wood that we're going to use, but more about that in a little bit. Let's just quickly give the final product a quick taste and a smell. There we go. Oops. On the nose, very sweet. Slight grain in the background. So yeah, smells like a quite decent white dog. Now let's just do the taste. On the taste, very sweet as it hits your tongue, then as it moves back into your mouth and you start exhaling, that nice grain funk comes through, has a beautiful grain layer, very good sweet layer. And like I said, I wish I picked up the corn. Well, on the taste, the corn does come through. It is nice and sweet. Keeping it to the true bourbon theme, we are going to be aging on American white oak staves. So uh, I'm going for a double toasted. So this is a nice dark toast, 220 for three hours. We're gonna add those in. One's gonna be charred, one's gonna be uncharred. So that goes in. Then I have a untoasted version that I'm going to char as well. And then one at 120 that we are not charring, we're just putting it in for those nice sweet vanilla and caramel flavors. As you saw the one toasted wood stave, I only tried to char on the one side. This un toasted stave over here i did it on all sides got it almost to the point where it's starting to fall apart and yeah goes in hot straight into the liquid and here we go get it all sealed up nicely and that's going to stay like that smoke and all for the next three, maybe four months before we open this up and taste it. Once again, thank you very much for sticking around to the end. And remember about the community still that we are busy building. If you want to have your input on it, sorry for the <laughs> music. My neighbors are having a party. So um, as I'm saying with the community still, Remember to head over to the community page and give your suggestions or at the bottom of this video quite a quick comment on what you think we should be doing in the community still. It is a massive 100 liter old copper geezer that we are converting into a still. So polls are up for the size, type, 
and another calls will be up soon so yeah get over there cast your vote and remember if you do contribute to this still in any way which shape or form your name will be engraved in it for all eternity so yeah once again thank you very much have a lucky day Thank you.